We'd like to start by thanking the Council for nominating the Comcast Center for the 10-year award. We are honored to be amongst distinguished colleagues and presenting alongside a remarkable body of work. I'd like to also thank our fantastic team, led by Robert Stern Architects and supported by Kendall Heaton, Thornton Tomasetti, Bala Engineers, and countless others. Their tireless dedication made this project possible. Megan and I will outline the urbanistic, developmental, architectural, and technical background of the project in the hopes of framing a context as to why Comcast Center continues to perform and contribute 10 years after completion. This presentation is about a 58-story, 975-foot tower. However, our story begins here. In 1683, with William Penn's plan for Philadelphia. Envisioned as a rectangular grid of streets spanning from the Delaware River to the east and to the Schuylkill River on the west, it's organized around a center square of public buildings, which later was occupied by City Hall, and four public green squares in each of the city's quadrants. So why do we start here? Well, we took two lessons from Penn's plan to inform our, our development and our, um, and our site. First, the importance of open space to create a relief from the grid. Second, the ability of public space to draw energy. Some more historical context. In the preceding 200 years, Philadelphia grew moderately east to west, getting denser and more vertical. By the mid-1800s, the Pennsylvania Railroad also played a dominant role in the city's fabric. The railroad's original terminal was a Broad Street station just west of City Hall. Its above-grade viaduct, nicknamed the Chinese Wall, physically and psychologically divided western center city in half until the mid-1950s. Our site is just north of the viaduct. In 1925, the railroad announced that it had planned to abandon the Broad Street Station. Graham, Anderson, Probst, and White developed a master plan for the Grand Boulevard that would link the two major transportation hubs and place all rail lines below grade. The boulevard was flanked by suburban station to the east, an Art Deco building completed in 1929, which also became the headquarters for Pennsylvania Railroad, and 30th Street Station, a classical building completed in 1934, it's Philadelphia's main train station. Suburban Station is an underground commuter, commuter rail station and is the region's busiest transportation hub. 30th Street Station, with a grand 120-foot-high light-filled central hall, connects Suburban Station to the National Amtrak Network. John F. Kennedy Boulevard was lined with slab-like buildings creating a nearly unbroken 18-story street wall along its eastern half. And with post-war urban decline, its western end was never completed and never became the Grand Boulevard envisioned in the master plan. Our site is a missing slab to the right. Fast forward 300 years from Penn's plan. Philadelphia is still dominated by the grid, the five squares, and in the second half of the 20th century, a central business district had developed west of City Hall. So that's the historical context of our site. In 2005, we broke ground for a 1.8 million square foot speculative office tower. Developing outside the central business district was one of the greatest challenges we had to overcome. In a compact market like Philadelphia, every broker thought we were mad and could never achieve rents to support new construction. However, we, we focused on a positive. Our site sat on top of approximately 100,000 commuters a day and could afford us the opportunity for a truly transit-oriented development. To overcome the challenges of, our, of a peripheral site and the ability to draw tenants and energy, we took our cues from William Penn 
and created a public plaza by pushing the building's footprint back from the street wall along JFK. The Central Business District did not have a public square, so we created one, a half acre one, on our site. Second, we converted Cuthbert Street to a pedestrian path and preserved its access through the site in the hopes of making the site more permeable. To shift the CBD center of gravity north and to command the kinds of rents we were hoping to get, it was also critical to achieve these attributes and aspirations. A modern forward-looking design, an efficient and high-performing asset, a sustainable environmental interior for its occupants. Ramses' design fully realized the site's potential by proposing two office buildings, framing the plaza. The tower is set back from the boulevard with a new public winter garden, while phase two building at the same height of suburban station maintains the street edge and completes the composition. We took full advantage of suburban station by extending the concourse footprint throughout our site with a grand entrance reminiscent of the scale of 30th Street Station. This entrance not only serves the building's occupants, but also is the entrance to the station by the Philadelphia public at large. The building only has 87 private parking spaces. 70% of the 4,500 employees in this building arrive to work by public transportation, bicycle, or foot. We believe our aspirations to dream big, combined with urban lessons from William Penn, led to a successful development that continues to perform and contribute to the life of the city today. The building represented a major commitment to the city of Philadelphia. We strive to impact not only the skyline, but the city's public realm. At groundbreaking in April 2005, the building was 39% leased on spec. To the naysayer brokers, we opened in June 2008, 99% leased to the Comcast Corporation and had achieved the highest rents in Philadelphia at the time. I'm gonna turn over the floor to Megan to present the design and its innovative attributes. Thank you. Thank you, Serge. You can't design great buildings without great clients and great collaborators, and we were fortunate to have both on this project. In fact, we had an extraordinary client in this developer, Liberty Property Trust. Serge and his colleagues believe that high-quality design is important not only to attract and keep good tenants, but because good design elevates the quality of the urban environments in which their buildings reside. When we think about skyscrapers, often the first thing we think about or that comes to mind is a building's profile on the skyline, its height, its facades, or perhaps its structure. And these features often give a building its iconic identity. But it's essential that we also recognize how important tall buildings are to the life of the city. As cities grow ever denser, this is becoming even more critical. The best skyscrapers not only enhance the skyline, they enhance the life of the street. They shape and enliven streets by their design, by the way they meet the ground, and they provide for activities that create lively public spaces. We aspired to achieve these dual goals with the design of Comcast Center. Comcast Center is a modern glass tower, 975 feet tall, and it was the tallest lead gold building upon certification. The structure incorporated engineering and design lessons learned from Anya Brazel and her team at Thornton Tomasetti about building hardening and steel structures with concrete cores. As Anya mentioned this morning, um, Comcast has a tuned liquid damper or a slosh tank um, designed for the top of the building to limit wind accelerations and increase tenant comfort. The tower is essentially a vertical campus for Comcast with major public spaces and communal tenant spaces at its base, dining facilities and the Comcast University at about the 750 foot mark and executive function spaces including two terraces at the top. The building was constructed over active railways which was a major challenge and this diagram shows the sectional relationship between the tower, the concourse and the septa tracks below. 
Here's the ground plan. As Serge noted, the project is organized around a new south-facing plaza contained by Suburban Station to the east and the future Phase Two tower to the west, with the church completing the rest of the block. Entrances from all four directions lead into the public winter garden and lobby and down to the concourse. The concourse also allows pedestrians to traverse the block north-south without crossing the secure zone in the lobby. Visual transparency is maintained through the lobby core from north to south and through the winter garden from east to west. Cuthbert Street, which functioned primarily as a service alley, was closed and became instead a landscaped pedestrian walk that passes through the Winter Garden and leads to a new entrance for the church's administrative building. All of these moves help to knit the, bitty, uh, excuse me, knit the building into the existing city grid. The tower base contains major public spaces, including the transparent Winter Garden, which is 120 feet tall, the same height as the waiting room of 30th Street Station. So it now becomes the new public room flanking the east end of JFK Boulevard. The plaza, which was, which was designed in collaboration with the Olin Partnership, was conceived as a new urban living room for Center City. It provides a welcome public gathering space where the daily flow of commuters and the new development intersect. It is activated with elements that foster a dynamic and urban environment. Fountain with programmable water jets, outdoor cafe, which became so popular it was ultimately expanded to accommodate seating in three seasons, shaded areas with casual seating, and lush plantings along the sidewalk, which helped to buffer the traffic noise within the plaza. The Winter Garden facade is transparent and reinforces the notion of the public realm continuing into the building, creating a seamless connection between outside and inside. The soaring Winter Garden space opens on to the office building lobby beyond. We wanted to create a 90-foot column-free open uh, span framing the lobby, and Thornton Tomasetti helped us to solve this problem by designing a 15-story Verandale truss, which transfers the load. A major component of this project is public art. Philadelphia has a strong tradition of public art and was the first city to adopt the Municipal Percent for Art Ordinance in 1959. The Calder family in particular have created some of the city's most beloved public artworks. Comcast Center features two major installations, Jonathan Borofsky's sculpture for the Winter Garden, entitled Humanity in Motion, which draws on themes of connectivity and individuals rushing along paths that cross but do not meet in our modern society. And the lobby features the Comcast experience by David Niles, a 2,000 square foot video installation that was the highest resolution LED display in the world when it was installed. It is now the second largest tourist attraction in Philadelphia after the Liberty Bell, drawing over 300,000 visitors annually between Thanksgiving and New Year's. The content is updated by the Niles Creative Group on a regular basis. The Winter Garden is a new public gateway from the plaza down to the concourse with its food hall and shops and the SEPTA station below. Our colleagues at Bala Consulting and Atelier 10 designed extremely efficient building systems and sustainable design features that are seamlessly incorporated into the architecture. The Winter Garden employs heating strategies such as sunshades with internal radiant fin tubes to prevent down traps, down drafts, low velocity underfloor air that conditions occupied areas only, a dark stone floor that captures and radiates heat back at night, and a double skin curtain wall at the lower zone that creates a thermal barrier and air return. Cooling strategies include high performance, low iron, low E glass, sun shades and vegetative screens to reduce glare and solar heat gain, low velocity displacement ventilation that tempers the occupied spaces only, hydronic in slab heat extraction, the aforementioned double skin wall, automatic heat evacuation at the ceiling. Vegetation shades 30% of the plaza while using rainwater for irrigation. And in fact, the Winter Garden roof collects annually some 60,000 gallons of water, which is then used for irrigation on the plaza. Three three-story sky atria overlook the plaza and were innovative because they create added value for the lower tower floors, which lack the great views. The tower was originally being designed as a spec building until Comcast signed on. 
and these south-facing atria provide spec building tenants with unique and identifiable corporate homes. These are now amenity spaces for Comcast. The office floors are extremely efficient with a 91% usable to rentable ratio and they provide flexible column free space with a 42 foot leasing depth. The tapering form of the tower creates eight corners on the office floors. The floor to ceiling height of the office floors is unusually tall. It's typically 11 feet clear and that rises to 13 feet clear on the upper 13 floors, creating open loft like spaces that are actually fully in sync with the demands of today's office users. Continuous low E glazing permits unobstructed views and brings natural light deep into the office floors, reducing electrical lighting costs. Interiors throughout the building were designed by Daroff Design and by Gensler. And so back to the tower form itself. It is a tapering glass obelisk. The inside corners, which are clad in clear glass, extend upwards to become the building's crown. Large urban windows create scale and also provide a sense of orientation when the tower is viewed from afar and from different angles. The, fa the facades are transparent at the corners and the tower base facing the plaza, making visible the building's interior life and reflective above. An integral LED lighting effect at the corners accentuates the tower's tapering geometry on the skyline at night. The tower form aspires to a timeless dignity on the Philadelphia skyline. So how, is the, how has the building performed 10 years later? The central plant outperformed the energy model that it was designed to meet, and that led to the building achieving an Energy Star rating of 87. Additionally, water saving fixtures saved three, millions, three million gallons of drinking water every year. So the, those are the building performance statistics. Um, but finally, the Comcast Center really expanded the central business di district and created a new heart in Center City, and it has transformed the city's skyline. It continues to enhance the city's urbanism at the scale of both street and skyline. Serge and I would like to thank the council again for nominating the Comcast Center for this award. Thanks very much. Thank you.